Yep. All right, if everyone's ready, I think we can get up and run it. Can it, you guys ready? Yeah. How's the audience, you guys ready? How's it going, guys? <laughs> okay, welcome to the 2019 Candidate Forum for the Studio City Neighborhood Council. My name is Michael Piscatelli, I'm your sweaty moderator. Um, and uh, yeah, let's see. What we're going to do is we are going to start this off um, with a two minute introduction by every one of the candidates sitting behind me. They are not grouped together as far as uh, what they are up for, they're a little bit mixed here. Uh, but they will each get two minutes to say hello, to uh, pitch themselves to you. And uh, then we'll take a, a little bit of a break so I can collect some more uh, questions from you guys here in the audience if you have them. If not, I have some as well, and we will ask them. Uh, everyone will get a chance. Everyone will get a chance to uh, answer these questions. Um, you have 30 seconds to answer the questions. And I will hold you guys to the two minutes for your introductions. I will hold you guys to the 30 seconds just so we can be fair about everything. Uh, when I first ask a question, I will pick your name out of a hat. It's not a hat, I lied. It's a. It's a it's it could be a hat. It could be a hat. It could be a hat. In my imagination world, it's a hat. So, uh, and then we'll start from that person and we'll just go clockwise. That's how uh, we can best keep it fair, I believe. And uh, we'll see what happens with that. So, again, each candidate's given two minutes for the intro statement, five minute break. Uh, names will be picked from the value. 30 seconds to answer. I'll hold you guys to the time frame. Um, and that's going to be about it. We don't have everyone here. Uh, there's a website you can go to. We'll get you the website in a bit where you can read some statements on everyone. But as for now, the people who have showed up are the people who are going to answer all your questions. So uh, with that said, why don't we start with the left here with Patrick. Uh, we're going to get two minutes. Give me two seconds, buddy, because I'm going to give yeah, you Yeah, I'm going to come nowhere close to two minutes. Don't worry about that. I'm Patrick Lewis. Hi, everyone. I'm currently the president of the Studio City Neighborhood Council. Um, I don't think I'm a very popular fellow amongst most of the people up here. Oh, should I say no? Yeah. Um, a lot of friends up here. Hi, guys. Alex, Lisa, Richard. Um, I'm running again. I'm a residential renter. I've got two little boys. Um, just a family guy living in Studio City. Glad you all came out. Thank you. And I, you don't have to set your timer for me either. So my name is Nancy Kramer. I am a personal manager working in Hollywood. I'm from Minnesota. I've lived in Studio City since 1998. 1998. Um, I raised two sons. One went, uh, they both went to St. Francis de Sales and Notre Dame High School. And I sing in the St. Francis de Sales Church Choir. And I'm currently on the bylaws, well actually I'm currently on the board now as a secretary. <laughs> and I'm a bylaws, um, I'm a parliamentarian, I've, got, I've been trained as a parliamentarian. And I think that's all. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Brian Carroll. I'm currently running uh, re-election for the residential renters uh, seat, one of three. Uh, I actually joined the board about nine months ago, and within that time, I've been actively uh, participating in five different committees, two of which I uh, currently chair. And now, uh, three months ago, I was named the vice president of the board itself. So within that short amount of time, uh, the reason why I bring that up is because it shows the amount of trust that people put into me to get things done in, into this community. My main focus for the board is to get as much civic activism and as much civic participation as possible within Studio City because any solution that we come up with currently is far underrepresented, and the more people we have, giving that voice to us, the better. Thank you. Great. Hi, I'm Claire Curie, and I love Studio City. I've lived here for the past 18 years of my life. I am currently the youth board member on the neighborhood council, and I have unfortunately aged out of that position to run again for it, so I will be running for residential renter. I am incredibly dedicated to making our community the best it possibly can be, and yeah, I hope that I can be great. <laughs> stakeholders in what we do. Um, as a board, we are here to listen to what's happening in the Studio City and what needs to be done. 
Um, we've kind of gotten away from that lately, but we need to get back to it. Um, we're here to take your issues and your ideas to the city council and a variety of different departments down here. Thank you. I'm Alexis Steinberg. I am running for a service organization seat. I've been a resident of Studio City for 30 years. Um, I am currently an attorney in West Hollywood and work a lot with the city council already on a number of issues relating to ordinance creation within both Studio City and um, Los Angeles at large. Although I've never been a part of the Studio City Council, my mother sat on the council for many years and I was involved um, through her for a number of years and I'm pretty versed in what goes on in Studio City um, and I'm here to listen, I am here to make a difference and I really want to open up a channel between the residents and the community of Studio City, the businesses of Studio City uh, to keep the charm, to keep what we love, to keep what I know of Studio City, um, and to make it better. Hi, everybody. My name is Alex is Vicky, and I'm currently running for the uh, the uh, self-employed uh, uh, business owner Studio City seat. Uh, I just want to let you know I've been on the board for the last five years, and uh, I've chaired uh, the bylaws committee and uh, been involved that way. Uh, what I've kind of seen in the last few years, uh, especially in the hands of our current council office and city, our city pretty much going down the toilet. Um, and, and it really concerns me. And as it's been echoed, I think our board is supposed to, our council is to be a bottom-up entity and not a top-down entity. So people that are involved with the city and want to create us as in like an echo chamber of, of what the city would like is really not the intention of our, our neighborhood council. So uh, with your help, I'd like to maintain that bottom-up structure and hopefully we can start changing and reversing our downward uh, spiral, which is unfortunate. Hope you'll uh, vote for me. Thank you. I'm Richard Dederberg. I'm the uh, longest serving member of the Tuesday Neighborhood Council. Um, currently the chair of the community um, organization committee, which I like to continue doing. I'm also, and I also uh, do the, uh, the Coastal Affairs Committee, you know? And I just want to stay on the job, and I think we're doing a pretty good job. And the Coastal Affairs, Part, I'm sorry, the um, community involvement part is dealing with all the other servant organizations which are set up to make Studio City enhance it and maintain our quality of life. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lisa Sarkin. I'm running for the employee seat of the Studio City Neighborhood Council. <clears throat> Many of you know me as I've lived in Studio City for most of my life and I have been an advocate for our community for a very long time. We need to be committed to protecting the quality of life in our little corner of the valley. We are under assault by state law and by city ordinances. The state has and may pass housing laws which overrule all of our local ordinances and create more density. The density affects all stakeholders of Studio City from renters to homeowners to businesses. The city council has also proposals before it regarding pardon, homelessness, which will have major impact on all of us from residential neighborhoods to local businesses. One size just absolutely doesn't fit all. I know my way around City Hall. I have a relationship with our city councilmen. I have a relationship with people in the planning department and other many other departments. And that is the, what we need to interface with them in order to get what we want for our student city. <laughs> it is an honor I take very seriously and have been for many years to be elected to, by the Studio City stakeholders. Please vote for me. I will not let you down. Hi, I'm Brenda Pat Kaplan. I've been in Studio City for the last 22 years. I raised two children. Um, one that's 20 and the other one is 15 and a half. Um, I'm running because um, I basically don't see kids anymore on the streets. And um, I want to make Studio City uh, a place that's kid friendly and family friendly. 
Uh, we are building the chubby houses and new families are moving in um, and um, I'm hoping that parents will get involved in making this neighborhood an actual community um, for the betterment of their children. Um, I am um, a therapist by profession and we are dealing a lot with an increase in um, um, depression and anxiety among children. And I'm here to say at least to the parents that basically um, the Kids cannot be parented only by parents. Uh, it's not meant to be just two people parenting children, um, but the community as well. And um, we put a lot on the schools to do that, and we have a fantastic school here that a lot of parents are moving in because of the school. Uh, but I'm welcoming parents to actually um, sort of understand how and, and, and collaborate um, with the neighborhood council and any other group that has the interest at heart of families and children. Um, I'm Rick. I've been in Studio City since 98, raising a daughter here, running to keep Studio City a nice place to live even as we face increasing technological and societal disruption. I think many of the problems we have have solutions and exacerbations that are based in technology. Homelessness, the, the, the airplane flight path, the loss of a brick and mortar business. Um, it's, we need to address, and we should have a tech committee to address that we, the technological issues we're gonna be facing. Um, we could look, we might be looking at the dispersal of the energy, and the entertainment industry is, is a huge economic engine for Studio City. And the entertainment industry is dispersing across the world. LA is going to, in general, become a less pleasant place to live and a less easy place to do entertainment in. And so, you know, CBS sold Television City, and if they if something happened to Radford, Studio City would have to figure out how to continue to be a nice place without it. So anyway, we should have a tech committee, right? and that's what I'm interested in. Thanks. Hi guys, I'm Adam Summer. Uh, I own a, a little townhouse in Studio Village, which many of you are probably familiar with. Uh, I think it's the biggest community in Studio City, biggest uh, ownership community. Uh, I've been interested in Neighborhood Council since I found out about Neighborhood Council, which was actually pretty recent. But before that, when I moved two years ago, I'm really excited to kind of establish my first like permanent place since I was a kid. Um, and I think Studio City is amazing. I do not think it's down the toilet, as Alex said, at all. Um, I've been so excited to be part of a bunch of different District 2 organizations uh, and advocacy programs, but lately I've recently found out that there is a neighborhood council. And I've also found out that not a lot of people know about it, including almost every homeowner in my homeowner community. So, as a board member, um, what I really want to do is engage demographics that are not advocated for, or unaware that they could be advocated for. Uh, you really want to hope that we can establish a better direct channel to District 2, uh, who has a direct channel to the city, because they're supposed to represent us directly, and for the most part, I think that district office takes a lot of what we say not very seriously, at least in my experience with them. Uh, so I definitely want to work with getting the aggregate together and creating a really strong voice that Paul can't ignore. Um, and there's a bunch of different programs that we can speak for and kind of hopefully improve some. I'm excited to get the chance to work with these guys. I've enjoyed going to the neighbor council meetings since I started. Um, actually, really quick, I don't know if I'm almost at my two minutes, but when I first moved to Studio City, I uh, was a fitness trainer and did fitness boot camps in this very room, free fitness boot camps. Uh, so that was my introduction to my neighborhood, and I've loved it ever since. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Eric Previtt. Uh, I'm a longtime resident of Studio City. I moved here uh, right out of college in 1985 and worked in Burbank and uh, in Studio City right at Radford as a TV writer and producer for many years, and then a little bit more as an international consultant, and I've become very local. I've gone local, I'm on this neighborhood council for the last few years, 
and I've, I've become uh, a watchdog journalist. So I write about the entities, including the city uh, and the county and the state, um, that impact our lives. One of the speakers mentioned the laws, uh, you know, don't always square up for the people in our community, and those are important. And there's other things that are important too. One of the big things for me um, is a sense of fair play, because I think, you know, the last time we ran for neighborhood council, some of the people, it was against um, a group that had changed the term limits. You know, so they, they were staying a longer time, and we thought, you know, enough is enough, let's get some fresh blood. And I think that there has been some fresh blood, and I think that it's nice to welcome everybody um, from, you know, the, the, the new groups and the old groups and try to find common ground. I think that we uh, can bring information about the city and the county to our stakeholders because they want to know what's happening at this very park, at the, you know, in our community, along the boulevard. People talked about, I don't know if they were blight, but, you know, businesses struggling. So I'm all about getting people to participate and finding some common ground. I'm on the compassion side of homelessness. But I'm also not afraid to say that and to also be respectful of people who may live closer to a situation that I'm not experiencing up on the hill. And I want to be responsive and fair about the way we deal with our uh, entire community. So that's my goal, and I look forward to more transparency as well. So thank you. Eric Previn, Home. Good evening. I'm Tony Thompson, and I'm running for the at um, large stakeholder position. I didn't realize how long two minutes is when I was told that's how long I had. Um, I have two grown children and they both attended Walter Reed and um, to me being in leadership means committing to serve, to serve all of you, to serve the people that I work with on the board. Um, you know, impacting the neighborhood in a positive way and keeping the value here. Um, I'm in real estate and I see this all the time and people are looking not just for the house itself but the neighborhood and community in which they live. Um, in my profession I deal with all types of personalities and I think it's important to be able to communicate effectively and um, that's what I bring to the table. Um, my negotiations, my experience, and my communication. So I would hope that you would all vote for me. Thank you. My knees. Okay, I'm Richard Adams. Uh, only lived in the Valley since 01, moved to Studio City here in 03, but I'm the rarest of all creatures. I'm a native of Los Angeles. So I remember when it was a nice place to live. I'm also running for a business seat as a paralegal, which leverages my uh, love of the English language. And I'm also a disabled veteran, so those who go out there and the rest of the population that has the blue placard because you ain't what you used to be, I'm on your side. Um, I've been active in the City of City Neighborhood Council almost since the time we moved in. Back in 05 and 06, Jack Weiss decided what our neighborhood needed was a tax district. I didn't think that was a good idea. And with the help of a few friends, including that nice lady back there, we uh, managed to defeat the uh, proposal. And that was the first time I found out about the NC. I've been active with them ever since. Well, we've seen what happens when the board goes through a massive shift all at once. Um, responsibilities get neglected, stakeholder input gets marginalized or ignored completely, our allies get snubbed, and needless fights are picked with the people above us in the food chain that we really need to get along with and need their help to get our mission done. From the approved list of candidates, it's clear there will be a significant changeover in the board's composition. But the important thing is that there's a reasonable mix balance between energy of the new people and the experienced people who know how the system works so we can get things done. And I'm looking to partner with some of the folks up here tonight so we can work, you know, to work that way, so we can get a board that represents all of Studio City, all classes of stakeholders, and, and interested in doing everything we need to address all the problems Studio City faces, not just everyone's pet peeve. Everyone's entitled to a pet peeve. The problem we run into is some people get target fixation, and the only thing they care about is their pet peeve, and they don't work well with others. You know, being on the board is hard work. You've got to work with you know, just being a board member, and uh, being a you know, good board member is more work, and if you're an officer, it's even more than that. My name is Joseph Tichy. I was born in Prague in Czechoslovakia, I became a citizen in 2016. I live in Studio City since maybe seven years now, already married. And I've become certified life master consultant and dream builder coach with life solution that works. And my mission is to lead people in 
vision-driven life instead of responding to conditions, creating something which we love and go and approach what we really want to approach. It's basically a way of thinking which I represent and I believe every collective should have somebody who is willing to do that work of thinking in a way which works. I also take this like a little experiment with life because I saw neighborhood council, I'm watching it for like two, three years what's going on, I feel live on few few meetings and I can say these people really care. And you just being here, you care as well. So I really appreciate your presence here. And if I would say if I could say the words vote for somebody, I would go for Mr. Richard because I saw his his grounding sense for how to make things done and his dedication for the call. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. That was a lot faster than I thought. You guys are really good. Uh, and we can continue on if um, I have a lot of questions already. Everyone, is everyone okay to keep going on? You guys are fine? Yep. No one needs to break? All right, well, then, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, we will jump into it. <laughs> and um, right off the bat, we will jump into the deep end so you guys will have some fun. Um, first, uh, let me choose a name, and uh, this is everybody mixed in, so if I call out a name who's not here, just please bear with me. Uh, we will start with Raymond J. Mon Magno, who is not here, I'm guessing. Right. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's find someone else who is... Eric Previn, you will be the first one we start, and then we will just start uh, uh, clockwise. So, you, whatever you feel most comfortable with, uh, you can. 30 seconds. Today, well, I'll give everyone 35 seconds. If everyone can, again, just restate your name and uh, which one you are running for, that would be great. That should uh, take up another five seconds. <laughs> the first question is, uh, what should be done about the homeless who are, and this is a broad question, uh, the mentally ill, the uh, drug addicted, as well as the uh, financially uh, unstable. Folks who are living on the streets, who are living underneath our uh, bridges and overpasses. Is there a solution? What do you feel can be done? Well, I think people know that we have to respect the law and arresting people is not going to work if they're not breaking certain kinds of laws. So that's not going to work. I think that the neighborhood council has two prongs. One is the public safety group who are being, remaining vigilant about who's around. And then there's the homelessness committee that is trying to connect that group to services. Now, some of the population doesn't want services, and you know, I know there's words that get thrown around the neighborhood council that I don't like, but it's it's strong language. You know, that group is a very hard population no matter where you are. Thank you. All right. I'm Tony, at large stakeholder position. And as far as the homeless go, I mean we all we, we're, we live right, I mean, they're outside our doors, and I feel the compassion as well, and nothing's being done. I mean, we have so much money here. Why isn't it being used to provide housing and medical assistance and therapy or whatever is needed for these people? I mean, they're crying out for help. Maybe they all don't want it, but we have to be part of making that change. Richard Adams, business seat. Um, there's, as Eric said, there's three classes. People with financial issues, they're receptive to help. You can help them. I've met several that were working at bonds and they moved on and got back to their life. Things happened to them, family problems, whatever. The people that are out on the street because it's where they can get high and get drunk all the time, they're the ones that don't want help. And then with being in the healthcare field, as I have been for years, the mentally ill, there are certain legal restrictions that you cannot get help. And even if you get them in the facilities, you can't even make, take the meds they need to get normal. Thank so you. there are no simple solutions to complex problems. Joseph Tihi for business. In my opinion, this problem won't be solved overnight. And it's bigger than a little city. It's basically a nation nationwide problem with homeless people here in the United States. So I would really recommend to go bigger than this little council, engage people with, with higher authority, people with bigger resources, and some some forces which can really help classes which are willing to be helped, classes which are really not willing to be helped. Let's find benefit. Thank you. Hi, I'm Patrick Lewis, and um, um, this is a, I deal with this issue quite a bit, and there is not an easy solution for it. It's not going to come from 
uh, level like this. It's going to have to be a federal and a state thing. I don't believe, as Mr. Esbicki does, that there's a quote unquote final solution um, to the homeless problem, which was an odd thing for you to say at the last meeting. Yeah, it's on tape. Um, we're working on it. It's going to get worse and before it gets better. I hate to say that. Um, there's not an easy solution to it. Certainly not something I can explain in 30 seconds. <laughs> okay. Uh, Nancy Kramer running for homeowner. Um, 30 seconds can't solve this problem, but the one thing that I think that the Studio City Neighborhood Council um, can do, and that is facilitate communications between people. And we haven't done that yet, and I think we need to do that. And that is um, 30 seconds. Uh, for instance, I had a friend that, that ended up homeless, and, and after a year of praying with her, she finally said, yes, I'll get help. I couldn't find anybody to help her. I went through Catholic Charities, I went through all these things, but there was places and I didn't know how to get to them. We need to be the resource for communication. Thank you, Nancy. <clears throat> Brian Carroll, residential renter. So I would say that the people in this town, whether you're homeless or not, we're still all neighbors. And we have to tackle this problem with that in mind. And there's two ways to deal with it. We can either push it to other towns or we can deal with it ourselves. And if we take on the problem, then we get to own the solution. That's all I'll say about that. Claire Curie, residential renter. Um, this is not a problem that can be solved in 30 seconds, and it, I don't think it can be exclusively solved just by the neighborhood council. We need to go to a higher level. That being said, I agree with Nancy, there are, we could do a lot for communication, and I think that we're starting to get there, but we're not nearly enough. Hi, Denise, um, homeowner. Um, yeah. The homeless issue is extremely uh, difficult issue and it's, it's not our level of truth. Um, but we have our people in the streets. Um, it's, it's, not, it, it, it's basically uh, a, a lot of this problem has to do with people who like to get high and drunk and people who are unstable with their mental uh, abilities and attitudes. Um, and they are being denied health care because we really don't have health care. Um, it's that simple. Um, and we need to get help here. <laughs> Alexa Steinberg running for service organization seat. I think that um, it's important to look at the problem as to what's creating homeless. We can find many different solutions on a case-by-case -case basis as to each individual situation, but I think that this problem needs to be headed the past to find out really the basis of the economic issues as to why people are becoming homeless uh, and see what we can do from the get-go to prevent this from beginning to happen. Well, hi, I'm Alex Vicky. I'm the uh, self-employed. I'm, I'm glad Patrick excels in one thing, which is uh, taking words out of context. Good job. I just want to let you know that uh, we have a solution here, but the one that the city is providing is not going to work. I've walked the river bed, I've met people that are downtrodden, and they do need the help. And that's what the city is focusing on, but that doesn't hit the majority mark, which is people that are chemically dependent and have mental health issues, and we really need to help them, and uh, we will focus more on that. Thank you. Peterberg, right for a community service organization. Um, just obviously it's a multi-pronged problem. Part of it basically was going around and taking uh, young adults, young kids in homeless situations and getting them in school. At least I could get them fed and they probably will learn something. But in that time basically getting home, the kids of homeless people in school was my little tiny part of trying to solve the problem. Lisa Sarkin running for the employees. We already are paying taxes, just so you know, from the county and the city. The rules that they have to follow from any lawsuits that have been brought against the city and the county is one of the reasons why it's so slow. Until they can figure out how to fix that, we have a problem that will keep getting bigger and bigger. And, and just so you all know, the mental health issues are handled by the county, and all the other issues are handled by the city. So we don't have anything that we can do about them. Thank you, Lisa. I have a solution. 
I agree with everybody. Um, so it's really community communication, and um, I guess this is the story of the marginalized. Um, there is not enough support, social support, and it's everybody's problem. And I don't believe it's just a name problem. Um, again, I don't think I have a solution. Rick Rosner, homeowner. Two things that can help a little. One is know your homeless people. Know the resources that can be directed towards the homeless people. There are cops who specialize in that. There are volunteer organizations. And also, help homeless people be informed about the resources available to them. That's it. Adam Summer, resident homeowner. Uh, homelessness and mental health definitely it's home with me. Um, I have that issue in my family, uh, and I've had to deal with both of them. Uh, but as a neighborhood, our job is to take tangible neighborhood-based steps. So we just have to simplify the issue and do what we can, which means clothing, it means food, and more than anything, I think we just have to disseminate information whenever we can to our local homeless people populations. All right, let's take care of the first question. Thank you, everyone, for being uh, very quick and succinct. That's wonderful. Um, let's see, our next question. First, let me get a name here. Uh, name, we'll start with Lisa Sarkin. All right, and then we'll go again, just clockwise here. So, Lisa. Uh, the question will be it's two parts. It's for those who are already on the board and those who are not on the board already. Uh, for those on the board in the three years you've served, uh, what are your greatest accomplishments? And if you have not been on the board this time, uh, if you join, what do you hope to accomplish? So. Okay, well, I hope to re-establish the rapport that we need to have with all the city departments and with our the people who are closest to us, which is Councilmember Corian. Although we can make comments on anything that we want to. I still think that the closest area to the closest people to us, we need to, um, and we also have to engage our stakeholders. There's only 20 people here, more should be. Um, I Facilitating the changeover from bricks and mortar businesses uh, to the, the new economy, which may include, we don't want, further down Ventura Boulevard, you've got a lot of empty spaces. We have empty spaces here where Color Me My Name was, for instance. Turning those spaces into business incubators so that we have an active business life. Uh, and all right, one other thing is uh, maintaining property values while continuing to make Studio City an inviting place for people of all economic levels. Thank you, Rick. All right, Adam Summer. I would love to engage the community. I think that's to do that, we have to have neighborhood council meetings. Uh, I think that's something that we have to have. To do that, we have to have neighborhood council meetings. It's very stakeholder friendly, which means they're shorter, more efficient, and get right to the point. Whereas these meetings can drag on for quite a long time. I just want our residents to want to go to these meetings and feel they can participate. So. Yeah. I'm Eric Previn, uh, homeowner seat. And I guess because I've been on the board, there are some things I'm a little bit proud of. A group of the uh, council stood outside of the yard and voted to say no to the Harvard Westlake Bridge over Coldwater, which was a powerful thing to do, and not everybody was with us, and we had to stick up to the council office, and, to, and it was powerful. And then, you know, we started some forums, which I think are good because it's about listening to what other people have to say. 
And finally, I'm proud of a writing contest that Keith Schwalenberg designed a little video for. That was such a great thing. We got 75 people. We haven't done it, but I look forward to bringing it back. Tony, at large stakeholder. Um, I'm new, and what I bring is my passion. I'm a bottom line type of person, and I think that if we come together and we're able to make that change and move the needle, that's why I'm here. Richard, this is C. Um, this is innovative. Uh, the business district, there's too many gaping holes, too many empty businesses, too many business turnovers. This board has not historically, and it's a major failure, not cooperated and worked with the bid and the, and the Chamber of Commerce. I've already worked at bringing them in and interacting with them and leveraging their facilities. Anything else, this district also helps the residents and everybody else. And I'd also like to see the board go back to following its bylaws the way they're supposed to be done, doing things according to Hoyle, and not just, hey kids, let's put on a movie. Thank you. Hi, Joseph. I'd like to influence the council on its own to become a dynamic and well, well, influence, well directing the power which, which really has. And also, grew up a little bit networking, as you said, put it in a context with, with governments, with, 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 with people who has money, who has influence, and people who can really do something. Uh, I'm Patrick Lewis. I guess I'm, I'm very proud of our formation of the Homeless Committee because obviously that's probably the number one issue that most people seem to have. And we finally put together a Homeless Committee. Um, we put some good money towards that, some good resources towards that. And I agree with Adam that I think the real goal should be that these meetings are so absurdly long, um, tedious, the same three or four people who show up at everything whose real goal is just to kind of disrupt the whole thing. I'm trying to, yeah. You, I got you, Barry. I'm trying to minimize their uh, impact in the whole thing and bring more new people in. And I'm Nancy Kramer, and I'm running for homeowners. And I am proud for my three months serving on the board. I have brought parliamentary procedures, one of the little things that we came in under two hours at a meeting ago. Um, is just, you know, you don't have to do roll call. You just say who's absent and if they're excused or not. Just little things like that, parliamentary rules that we can clean it up. Um, and then my goal for future is reaching out and reaching stakeholders so that they know we exist because they don't. Brian Carroll, Renter. So the first thing I did when joining the board was get Studio City to be part of the Neighborhood Council Sustainability Alliance within the Valley here. Uh, I also worked with the Homeless Committee to put together a, a flyer for, of resources that can be handed out to police and the homeless alike. And also with Eric Kreven, we've been able to develop an open forum series for the neighborhood to connect with issues and local candidates. Now again, that's what I did in nine months. If I have your vote, we're going to see what we can do in two years. I'm Claire Curie. I'm running for renter. In the two years I've been on the board, I am incredibly proud of every event that I've helped set up for. I'm really proud of our elections committee that I'm part of, and I really hope to get more done and really try to bring in more of our stakeholders into this body, I guess. Hi, I'm Denise. Um, we've done quite a few events to try to get out into uh, the, the community and, and involve people and let them know we're alive. Um, I think uh, between the Luminaria and the picnic and Ruby's in the Park and, and we've had a, a Green Living Fair and, and a variety of other little things uh, constantly at the library. Uh, so um, we've tried, and I think there's more that we can do. Uh, probably we need to be better on Facebook, Twitter, and all of those. Alexa Steinberg, Service Organization C. I think that there is definitely um, the ability for the council to be more effective for change um, and more efficient in how they go about that change. Um, and really increase the communication, not only between the uh, homeowners, the stakeholders, the businesses, but city council to really let them know what is needed and really effectuate change at the ordinance level. I'm Alex Vicky. Uh, I kind of echo a lot of what's being said. Uh, in my tenure, uh, we've helped with bylaws and get some bylaws. We tried to pass a few changes that would kind of streamline our bylaws. We weren't successful for whatever reasons, unfortunately. And secondly, just keep pressing the city that we're a top, a bottom to top entity, and we're going to keep pressing their feet to the fire that they have to listen to us 
and not in reverse, which is them that tell us what to do. So I'll continue that fight. Richard Niederberg, I went to the community organization seat. Um, I think the most important thing is to uh, enhance and maintain the quality of life in the city. Um, as head of the um, Cultural Affairs Committee, we had things like the uh, Lombardia, now we have the, the picnic, we've had um, movies at the, uh, at the library, we've had all kinds of lecture series try to bring people in to say that seriously this work is happening, you know, and try to improve the quality of life. And that is it. You guys are doing wonderful. Yes, so let's see you please. Well, well, well. I like it. All right. Thank you very much for that. Um, <laughs> we pick a new name out of this uh, wonderful little uh, see-through hat that I now call it back. And uh, I'll have another little two-part question here. Um, Adam Summer? Yes, sir. There you go, Adam. Okay, you will be first. Again, we'll just move uh, uh, clockwise after this. The uh, question will be um, kind of a two-part. Okay, uh, if you're on the committee, if you're on the board, what committee uh, would you like to uh, take part in? If you do not get elected, will you still stay around to join a committee? If so, which committee? Understand? Uh, definitely the homeless committee. I mean, I know it's kind of an incipient committee, but that is home with me, and we see it every day, and we all want to make changes, and I think it's about time that, that we all get involved in whatever way we can, because it's not that hard to do. Um, and if I'm not on uh, the board, uh, the land use committee is always interesting, especially recently since I've got involved with my Studio Village uh, neighborhood committee. So, that's that. Eric Previn, a homeowner, and when I ran last time, I was against so many committee meetings, and then finally I got to chair a committee, and I thought, oh, I get it, and it's nice to have a smaller meeting, but I think too many committees is not as good as maybe a couple board meetings. I'm a government affairs chair, and I've, I've really enjoyed it, I've committed, filed several committee impact statements, one today, uh, we were proven correct, because we said, let's not scan people for their affiliation because it's unconstitutional. And now they're being sued for that very thing uh, at City Hall, Mitchell Farrell. So we were ahead of that, and it feels good to be way in. Thank and you. Thank you. Thank you. Tony at large. I, um, you know, I'm not too familiar with what all the committees are, but I'm totally open to wherever the need is. Homeless would be great, but again, I'm open. If I'm not chosen, then yes, I absolutely will still continue to come and support. Richard Adams, business. Um, I've been active in the committee since, since I started being active with the neighborhood council. I've been committee member, committee chair of public safety. I actually changed the name of that one. We work with outreach, sustainability, um, bylaws, um, the environmental group, all of them. Budget's important, bylaws is important, government affairs is vitally important, and we need to get back to addressing issues where the legislation at the city or state level is directly affecting us instead of chasing after vanity things. Thank you. Um, Joe, that, I got a lot of the questions, sir. Uh, the question is, uh, it's uh, two parts. You haven't been on, uh, if you get elected to the board, which committees will you try to be on? Oh, okay. Or if you aren't, will you still be involved with the committee? If so, which one? Okay, so I'm here like your neighbor, okay? And if I don't get elected, I'll still be your neighbor. And I'm still gonna do what I consider the best, and I always want to be in touch with the, with the neighborhood council because it's here and it's doing a good job, and that's important for me. I don't have to be elected, I will. If I will, of course, I, will, I mean, oh, is a question about what, what part I'm going to be elected. Yeah. 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 Obviously, I don't really care much if it's going to be business or homeless. I'm more interested about the dynamic and really disturb the power the way it needs to go. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Patrick, I, I was the former chair of the, uh, of the budget committee, and I actually, you won't hear me say this often, but I agree with Eric 100% that um, I think that we do need to streamline some of these committees. I think there's too many. Um, and I would like to, if I'm not elected, I would probably still um, like to work with the homeless committee, which our new committee chairman has just entered the room. So, how are you? Sorry to put you on the spot. I just, I was hoping you were here. Yeah. Good to see you. Um, Nancy Kramer, homeowner. Um, I've been on the bylaws committee through several different 
brains of people. Um, before that, I was on a grievance committee that was under Walker, um, John Walker. So I will still participate with the neighborhood council as long as they want me. Um, and I, I'm happy to serve as an officer on the, they seem to have troubles getting officers on this board. I'm not sure why I'm happy <laughs> to serve as an officer too. I would say absolutely. Committees are where the work is done, and at the end of the day, it's about service, service to the community and service to the board, and that's, above all, that's what I believe in. So, as it can be clearly spelled out by the fact that I'm on five of them. So. Ryan Carroll, Renter. I'm Claire Curie, I'm a renter. Um, and I plan to get more involved with government affairs, bylaws, homelessness, and sustainability, as well as I'm currently on the ad hoc elections committee. And whether or not I get in, get reelected, I definitely plan to be involved with committees. Denise Homeowner, um, I've been on a number of committees. Uh, they're all helpful, they're all useful, and uh, they all bring your information and your desires to the board um, in the form of motions. And uh, whether I'm elected or not, I will continue to work with the committees. Alexis Steimer, Service Organization Z. Um, I'd like to be part of the Land Use Committee to help preserve the charm of, of what Studio City is and especially preserve the variances and the specific plan, especially for the Eastern uh, portion of Ventura Boulevard. If I'm not elected, I still would like to be a part of um, a committee. I think as an attorney, I have uh, the special abilities to bring an understanding of, of the law to the Studio City Council and help in any way that I can. Hi, I'm Alex, this is Vicki, uh, employee seat. Uh, I'd like to continue working with public safety. Uh, I realize that we've had some challenges recently with our public safety, and we don't have that intact. It will impact every aspect of our lives. Uh, the key, we did, we did have some, have, we, did, we did get some uh, traction, but again, due to the lack of a response from our city councilmen, uh, our, 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 our head of public safety left. So I hope we're gonna kind of get that reinstated. Thank you. Richard Ginberg, um, ready for, are you ready for the seat of the, um, Service organizations. Um, I've been I've been on this council for over ten years, and before that, I was, uh, before I was the council, I worked on land use and other committee stuff. And while I've been here, I've been uh, the uh, head of the budget committee uh, when uh, we had Michael Closter, the treasurer. I've been on bylaws. I just want to keep on doing everything already. We can do it well. I've been on all of the standing committees except homeless. It wasn't in existence when I was on the board. My forte is land use since I was the land use chair for eight years. And I have many certificates that I received in the learning process of how to be a land use chair. And, but I don't care what kind of stuff I do as long as we start get, engaging more people to the meetings and participate. <clears throat> um, so my approach again comes down to community and the human element. Um, I believe it is a transgenerational issue. Um, we have elderlies of the past which are isolated and we have children that are actually also marginalized, they're not part of the community. Um, and then we have us, the sandwich generation. So um, basically, um, I, I really want to build, um, to help build community. Um, I'm traumatized by that. <laughs> <laughs> I can use my left side of my I don't know which one. I can use my foot if I can. All right, uh, Rick, to you. Rick Rosner, homeowner. Um, currently on government affairs, we'll continue with that interested in stakeholder outreach via social media and maintaining a healthy local economy which is kind of cultural affairs kind of some other stuff and tech if we ever have a tech committee even though people i respect say no no more new committees <laughs> all right all right thank you everyone moving on to the next question next question let's see who do we got this time stacy joiner here. And it's uh, Randall Free. Nope. 
Patrick Lewis. Hey. Hey, buddy. <laughs> All right. Uh, the question is now going to be, what do you see as the role of the neighborhood council in working with our elected LA City Council official or officials? The yeah, the role of the neighborhood council is pretty big. I mean, we're an we're an advisory board to Paul Kerkorian or whoever is the chairman, chair, sorry, <clears throat> committee member, council member of CD2. Um, currently, I work with Jessica Fugate quite a bit. That's his field deputy that handles uh, Studio City. I meet with her at least once a week, maybe. Um, you know, all we can do is advise them. They don't have to listen. I wish they would, but honestly, there's not much else we can do. I, how do you follow up the current president when he says what the job is and how our relationship? I, I suppose that's what it is, right? I haven't had that seat. So, um, but I do know that in order to tell the city council what the wishes are of the studio city stakeholders, we need to hear from the Studio City stakeholders. And that's the piece that we hear from the same ones all the time. And they're great, good, good, but we need, there's a lot of people that live in Studio City that we just don't reach. Yeah, this plays a lot into my main issue, which is civic engagement of the town. It's like, yeah, we are an advisory board and they don't have to listen to us, but if we get enough people together and make them listen to us, we can make the change in this community that we want to see. Which is why for the next two years, if, if elected, that will be my main priority is to get more people into participating through either open forums or board meetings or any other kind of ideas, and then we can take it to City Hall after that. Claire Gray, I'm a residential renter. Um, as has been said, we are an advisory board to CD2, um, and we really do need to increase our outreach to the greater community to get their voices heard by Paul Cordian, whoever has that seat. And we really serve to advise and we hope that they listen to us more maybe. Uh, Denise, uh, homeowner, um, one of the things that um, we've tried previously, you get the uh, whoever's in CD2's uh, position, uh, which is currently Paul, or you get uh, uh, Mr. Nazarian, who is our state representative, and they come and tell us what's going on, and then we have an opportunity to tell them what we think. We need more people there to tell these individuals what we think. Maybe they'll listen to us. Alexis Steinberg, um, service organization seat. In my uh, daily operations as an attorney, a lot of what I do is dealing with the city council. On a daily basis, I've created a lot of relationships with um, many of the, the uh, council members, including Paul Krikorian and Adren um, up in Sacramento. Um, I'm well respected and, and understood by them, and I think the communication is very key. In addition, I think that um, my generation, the young of Studio City, really need to get involved, and I believe that I have a good outlet um, to engaging all of my friends and new families in Thank Studio you. City. Hi, Alex is Vicky employee. I agree with, with uh, what has been said. It's very important. The neighborhood council system was brought in from the ashes of our secession movement uh, many years ago. Uh, yes, the city council can choose to, to, to listen to our advisory uh, uh, capacity, but we really need to compel them because really that is what we were promised, that we would be the eyes and ears of our communities and we need engagement. If we don't get it, we need to ask why. And, and that's what we need to keep forward, moving the ball forward. Richard Niederberg, um, going for the community service for the seat, you know. Um, this all started in November 1998 when I went to the formation committee for the neighborhood council. And one of the things that was made pretty clear that the city council members would be, would be asking the neighborhood council for coverage. In other words, if they make it an unpopular decision, but they say, wait a minute, these six neighborhood councils want this, it covers them. And that's one of the things that come in, it's still there, we're still advisory, but if Thank they give enough CIS or the statement, Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Lisa. Lisa Sarkin, employee. Um, my relationships with the elected are, is already 
certify I'm also the appointee to the Ventura Coin Boulevard Corridor specific plan for Councilmember Kikorian. Um, I believe that what's missing now is that the any motions or proclamations or community impact statements that come out of the Studio City Neighborhood Council are not followed to the council. No one goes to the meetings to represent what we actually want. Just sending stuff in isn't enough. Thank you, Lisa. <coughs> um, so I think that my direct experience is in power in numbers and perseverance, and I guess our ability to vote them out if they are not basically receptive. Um, I had quite positive, I would say, responses with uh, a local homeless um, issue and excessive filming in some parts of uh, the district. One important thing is the board receives roughly $38,000 from the city council, which can be used to show the wider world that Studio City is a good place to live, work, play, and do business, and for community outreach. Uh, the Olympics are nine years away, and that will show LA to the world, and in nine years we want Studio City, even if the rest of LA kind of stinks, to shine as a good place. Adam Summer, homeowner. Uh, I've worked with Council District 2 in starting brief initial camps right here at Freeman Park. Uh, the pace that the Council District goes is often very slow and the communication very poor. And I worked with Jessica a lot and she's great. If we want a, a more leveraged position, I think there needs to be more cohesion and synergy between neighborhood councils. We need to create an aggregate that's strong that can come together with one voice. And I like guys like Patrick representing us. And I think we can kind of come as one unit and be stronger. Thank you. Eric Revan, homeowners. And Krikorian, this is bigger than Paul Krikorian, who is a among the council members, I rank him near the top. He's a decent council member. But when you're representing the city of Studio City, there are going to be times when we have to stick up for ourselves. You know, and that's very important. And um, I think that, uh, you know, there are examples of that. We've been asking about a mobile pit stop, and whereas, you know, that's something to go near the red line where people can use the bathroom. And they're trying to help, but it's in the hands of Metro. But when you look at the email chain, it makes you realize that we need to bring uh, our collective voice to get stuff done. Thank you. Uh, Tony Thompson, at large stakeholder. I agree with a lot of the candidates here. I think there's power in numbers. And I think as we grow and we get stronger, I think it's going to be inevitable for um, them to listen to us as a city. Richard Adams, business. Um, I've been working with the council office ever since about 2006 or so, which is when the tax district thing started. They're good people. You, it helps to establish what the city is capable of doing and not expect miracles. And the number one thing I can tell you that helps getting things out of the council office is not to pick fights with them and insult or be rude to the staff and the councilman himself. We have to work with them. We're not their boss. And, you know, nice goes a long way. When I tell you it's time to be diplomatic, People will tell you it's time to be diplomatic. Thank you. <laughs> so you might agree with me that first currency of this universe is idea. Sharing the idea is the must. So communication is the key. Now, the way we people communicate, it's, it's on many levels. And once we start to understand it doesn't have to be the old paradigm, it's either or, but it's both and. <coughs> At that moment, we are able to open their minds to come to new solution, and from the discussion, we really come with great new idea, which gonna work. Thank you. All right, we are back around again. Fine. Can I have five seconds? Uh, as the will say, my knee just made a loud cracking noise a few minutes ago when I went to stand up. I'm not going to be standing for the rest of the meeting. You'll forgive me, but like I said, I got a blue placard, and my body just reminded me why. <laughs> Nobody has to stand and won't be sitting. So you guys are all good. Whatever you guys want to do, you're all good. Thank you. All right, so let me, uh, next question coming into first. Richard Niederberg, you are the first person, all right? Again, we will just go clockwise on this. Um, we have already talked, um, everyone in some form or manner has uh, talked outreach. So how do you plan on involving stakeholders in the Studio City Neighborhood Council? What is your plan for involving the stakeholders and getting them to come into more meetings or to engage them better in something like this? Vigit. Well, 
um, like an interview basically you'd want to get them involved in something they want to go to. Like for example, we have a movie series twice a year at the library, we've got Luminaria, we now have the new summer picnic. So the idea is to get them in there, and once they're in there, they can talk to us, see the tables, etc. Pull them in because going to CBS is not always enough. Thank you. Outreach can be accomplished by many, many, many means. And one of them is distributing. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, agendas to the homeowners that are involved, for instance, in a certain um, application, which is what we used to do, and we used to bring them in like crazy. Also, collecting people's email addresses at these forums and um, events that the neighborhood council has. You have to ask them, please give me your email address if you'd like to get information from us that you can accumulate 4,000 names or whatever. Thank you. <coughs> um, from direct experience and yeah, use of media, um, so a simple Facebook presence, uh, door to door, uh, use the street fair, which is very populated again, like with uh, families and children. Um, and um, a lot of times, a lot of the cheap tool or cash approaches, they get accumulated on face to face, uh, talking, talking to your neighbors, um, schools. Social media, public events with free stuff. We've got that 38,000 to play with, and a lot of local business. What's that, 32? 42, 10% 40, more. Um, also, a lot of local businesses, especially restaurants, will come, will bring free samples. And so if you, if you can bring businesses in, you can get these. Anyway, that's, that's it, public events. All right. Yeah. Social media is great, but it's only great if it's targeted, especially to a younger demographic. It just sits out there on an island if it's not specific. I love the idea of doing fun family-based events. There's so many families and young people out here, and there's certain ways to target those. And so we have to be in tune with their specific needs. However, this window we have right now, the next few weeks, is our chance to go knock on doors. You don't have that, that excuse very often, so we can do that and we can tell people about these meetings right now. Thank you. Very private homeowner, I think um, there's two things. Bringing information that we have to our constituents in a way that's digestible, like one of our constituents we can actually talk about a newsletter, so that people feel like they want to come to the meetings. And then at the meetings, I think that we have to ensure that it's a fun experience. And the most important thing, I think, from the public's perspective is they want to be heard. You know, so even though I like to run an efficient ship, I don't want to get too efficient that people are being shut down after 40 seconds. You know, it just feels like we want to hear from you. <laughs> As I shut you down. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I didn't know it was possible. Thank you. Uh, Tony, at large stakeholder, um, I really believe there's nothing magical that we can do. We need to get to work and we need to go door to door and knock on people's doors and invite them and let them, making them aware of what's going on. And I'm sure nine out of 10 people would be more than happy to start attending. Richard Adams, um, riffing on something that was said earlier, I think outreach should be expanded to be outreach slash tech rather than creating a committee. Uh, committees need to address issues the public is interested in. And of course, we need to get that message out. Meetings need to be accessible. Committee meetings someplace other than CBS might be a good idea. Finding a place to have them at, not so easy. And uh, we need to encourage public comments. People want to think they get heard, not strangle them. You know, our bylaws call for, operating procedures call for three minutes of public comment, and it's been two, three years, and suddenly it's one year. Just from my standpoint of view, the best argument is the result. So if there is some work which really went to, but something happens and the member of council really played a role in it, they put a name on it, they put a stamp on it and say, hey, this park is here because your neighborhood council. This thing is there because your neighborhood council. And people talk. So if, if somebody of you get help, you gotta tell your neighbors, your neighbors tell some your neighbors, and they'll help you make it grow. Uh, outreach is difficult because when people come to these meetings, I mean, I can't, when people come to their first meeting, there's not a bigger turnoff than some guy who claims he's been in the thing for 15 years yelling about that the operating procedures have changed and this and that. 
um, those voices aren't interesting to me and I have never cut people off in meetings, especially when it's their first time and they have an actual thing that they want to talk about, as opposed to the lunatics who show up and sign up for every agenda thing to rattle off their two minutes. Thank you. You have an issue, homelessness is probably the issue. You have a, a community get together to discuss the issue. You bring in some experts and then you bombard Studio City stakeholders with that information, putting it in every storefront, every coffee shop. If you need to do robocalls, if you can afford to do bulk mail, um, to house to house to, to direct to mail to businesses and homes. Um, and, um, and from there, you, then you've got to keep the meetings moving fast and relevant. And those meetings are for the stakeholders and not for us. Can I just add one more thing? I have uh, to walk out. I have another. So I'm leaving. Everyone needs it. I'm going to say goodbye. That's what I'm saying. Say goodbye. Thank you. I'm sorry. I have another commitment. So, thank you. I'm she's going to have to leave early. So, uh, she's. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see you later, too. So, thank you for staying late. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Again, sorry to cut everybody off uh, and trying to give everyone the, the appropriate amount of time. I really appreciate everyone who's stepping up to do this and everyone uh, for your patience as well. Thank you, guys. Uh, Brian, we will uh, pick it up with you. Uh, what do you plan on doing for outreach to get people to, uh, to the studios and their neighborhood council meetings and engage? Yeah, I think you have to meet stakeholders where they are. And I agree with Nancy in the fact that we need to come up with some sort of pamphlet or identity that we can put in every single business. And there's a disconnect between what we do and what the town stands for. And so like every time a business is, is expanded or every time you know there's the new parking uh, rules, that is the neighborhood council. And to make that connection for people, to actually have them understand why we're here, would allow them to understand why they should participate. Claire Venture, um, and I think that we need more targeted ads and we need, we need more smaller events, whether it be committee meetings outside of Radford or more of the open forums or something along the lines of that. Free food, free stuff is always a good draw. And I agree with Nancy and Brian that we need to have more, we need to have some sort of pamphlet or something in businesses and sent out and stuff. Um, Denise, um, homeowner, um, we used to have a uh, little flyer in the bookmarks that we would go to the uh, farmer's market on Sundays. We met a lot of people, we got a lot of names, um, and we, le we left them with something of ours that told them all of our committees and who we were and when our meetings were. It's an easy way to do it and it has been done. Alexis Steinberg, Service Organization. I think constant contact is the key. Um, and technology is a great tool for that. Um, you know, next door, Facebook, Instagram, constant contact, which is a, an email service. But I think that if, if the stakeholders aren't coming to us, we should go to them. What kind of events are the businesses in Studio City having? We should represent the city council at their events. Go and talk to them. They're not gonna come to us. We're going to go to your business and talk to you. Alex is Vicki. I uh, just want to mention, it doesn't matter how much outreach you do, ultimately, if we're not listening to the people vis-a-vis uh, -vis our city council, uh, they're not going to come. So it doesn't matter. You do all the outreach in the world. If you're not getting satisfaction, you're just not going to show up. And also maybe having some leadership that doesn't squelch the voice of our, of our constituents and call them, characterize them as lunatics or whatever. No, we are in a, we do have the First Amendment and uh, we must protect that at all costs. Thank you. And that's the top of the key. For everyone just joining us, if you guys have any questions, you want some questions, I think we may have some extra uh, papers around here. Feel free to write your question. I've got some things over here uh, if you'd like to. Um, it's an open forum, so. What? Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, we'll pass some things around. Did anyone else get any more? Yeah, you get a few seconds, sir, sir. Uh, can I collect any
possibly give it our, our informed consent. But you're just doing what you want, you know what it does. Just stay orders. Thank you. Just quickly repeat the question. Uh, the question is, where would you say uh, the current board has fallen short, and what would you like to see happen for Studio City in this next year? I can't really say where the council is falling short. I think they're doing a great job in their utility. I'd like to see more, for more Let's say integrity, integrity like on a, on a board on its own, plus the connect to other boards, because we will have to come up off, off our shelf to get connected on a, on a scale which is appropriate to our times by now. I think the current board has fallen short on. Um, uh, so it's a it's a rough group. It's um, a lot of a lot of people who. Um, I think forget that the meetings aren't for them to just drone on themselves. Um, I can't answer this in 30 seconds. I have so much to say. I'll go on, Brian. Uh, uh, Brian Carroll Renter. Uh, I've, I've only been with the board for a short time, but I think part of it is our lack of wanting the big ideas. And there's been a, a couple things that I've seen be pitched that are really great and we should fight for, and it's been met with a lot of blank stares and well they'll never go for that the city council will never go for that these people will never go for that and at, at some point we got to try to to actually do something and make something instead of just giving speeches at the board meeting to improve your own profile or to use a video of it later we need big ideas in studio city we have the big ideas in studio city we need to implement them. thank you i think we've fallen short with outreach and really reaching our constituents and i really like to see us actually make more of an effort to reach our constituents and really get the word out there about us and that their voices can be heard with us. Uh, Denise Homeowner, um, I, I'm with Claire on the idea of what well, we're lacking in outreach. We need to go to the uh, market uh, on Sundays and see the people, how to the people. We need to have more events where, you know, we can um, have the ideas at the, at the library and, and people come to us. Uh, we, we're lacking. We need more you know, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it takes to get a hold of people. The younger people are all on the internet, so we need to go there. Uh, Alexis Steinberg Service Organization. I've seen a little bit of a disconnect with not only the community okay. but the uh, city council as well. There have been um, numerous news reports that I've, I've seen photos of all, all the different um, neighborhood councils being represented with the city council and in many of those photos, the Studio City Council um, is absent. And I think that it's important that outreach not only with um, our constituents, but with our city to understand what Studio City needs is important. Um, 
I, I believe that 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 our that our meetings they have to go along. I mean, we're doing a lot of work. Uh, we have a lot of committees. Uh, the issue is going to be is when the people feel they're being heard. And uh, you know, our recent leadership has really negated that, and it's probably caused a lot of people not to participate. And even our prior tenure had a problem with listening to people and letting letting them speak, which is really one of the, the fundamentals we need to still embrace. Richard Nadeberg, one of the service organization. I think the biggest thing is to make people feel that there's something that the neighbor council can do that will help their particular problem, whether it be parking or parks or whatever it is, we have to feel like we're doing something that helps them or else we become irrelevant. Lisa Sarkin, employee. First of all, there are rules for open government. We get public money, so rules have to be followed. Number two, the Studio City Neighborhood Council has bylaws and operating procedures that are not followed now. The information about the meetings doesn't go out um, in a timely fashion, correctly, and no one then knows about it. It's really important that those rules are those rules are followed. And we need much, much, much more money spent on outreach, period. Just outreach. Thanks. So certainly I agree with the outreach, but somehow I think it's implied that uh, we are talking about stakeholders as a unified uh, body organism, and I do not believe that that's the case. I believe that as a modern uh, society, we are very fragmented. Um, so uh, uh, it, it's going to have to be put a lot of thought how to uh, meet uh, different uh, people that I guess where they are, but it's a very, uh, it, it, it needs a lot of resources. I agree with everyone about outreach. had no idea the council existed until Trump got elected and I was looking around for some way to get involved a little bit. Uh, our social media could be much more fun, much more effective. You can throw polls up there. There's, the Studio City has a huge, deep history. We have a walk of fame of entertainment. You could tweet, like all, like uh, ABC show spent 20 minutes on location, 20 minutes of the show. A gunfight staged at, at Laurel Canyon and Ventura was on just a couple nights ago. That's a cool thing to do. Again, Adam Summer, outreach is great. We definitely need to improve that. I did not know about neighborhood council until very recently, and I've been involved with council district too. However, you can bring 500 people to the meetings, and two months later, there's going to be 10. And I, it's such a deterrent when the same people speak over and over. And I've wanted to stay till the end of these meetings, but I have a baby at home, and I don't have time to just hear Richard talk every question. And I'm sorry, just being honest, I think it needs to be more efficient. <laughs> and I think you really will attract young people, because there's a magnetic thing to it. Eric so. Revin, homeowner. And I think, you know, it's a, one of our shortcomings, and I'm not gonna blame Patrick for it, is, that we can't seem to find <laughs> common ground on some of the issues that are so important. And we're breaking down the way we communicate about it. And that's why I'm concerned, even though I appreciate the comment, you know, that some people talk a lot, I think that if we if we you know limit the window, it's gonna be hard. But I wanna I wanna work together with the different per, you know parties that have disagreements to try to find solutions that we can bring to our community. Thank you. Uh, Tony Thompson. Um, as far as falling short, you know, I, I feel that there is a disconnect here and I feel we're all here for a reason and we just need to focus and come together and grow as a community. Great, thank you very much. Yeah, we are on fire here. Uh, this is wonderful. All right, so um, we got another, uh, you can't up and leave now, you're already in this. I'll see the rest of this. Uh, How did we walk your by? <laughs> you can answer from inside now, okay? Just yell. It's locked. It's locked. Luckily, you're all good. Joseph, it is for you, and I'll repeat the question to you about him afterwards. All right? Uh, the question is to Joseph. Um, are you open to listening to other people's ideas, and how do you handle differing opinions than yours? Are you open to uh, other people's opinions, and how do you handle differing opinions than yours? I consider myself a very open person to to listen, because we all human beings 
we are something. In these bodies, there is a power which is far greater than any position, any circumstances. And when somebody talks to me, I better listen because there is something to hear. Uh, I really work on my listening skills. Uh, I actually really, really am I enter into most debates that we have fully prepared to lose and change my mind on it. Uh, Brian here and I don't agree. We've had <laughs> huge disagreements. Uh, you've seen some of them. And um, I, I, I respect you know where he comes from and we just have different opinions. I don't agree on things like when someone says we should have a final solution for the homeless problem. I'm not going to entertain that as a valid argument that should be listened to. But um, outside of that, yeah, totally. Brian Carroll, Renter. I will listen to everybody. I won't always take that, the advice of it, I will say. You gotta be able to sift through the different opinions and the different solutions, but you can't isolate yourself into a single bubble. But that being said, I have worked already and listened to several different people who have much different opinions of mine. We've already brought one up. Certainly, <laughs> Richard Adams, I have a, a very unique relationship with as well, and I find his opinions to be very valuable as well. Um, Claire Curie, renter. Um, I pride myself on being open and being a good listener. I find listening, being a good listener is one of the most important parts of being <coughs> in the office. Bless you. Um, I am perfectly open to listening to what other people have to say, and even if I don't agree, I generally will respect them, even if I don't agree. Um, Denise um, Homeowner, uh, everybody has something to give. Um, and if you leave yourself in a bubble, and you don't listen to anyone, you don't hear what they say, you don't participate, um, you might learn something that would be very valuable. Um, we have to listen to everybody's viewpoint. Um, you don't have to agree with everything everybody said, but you need to listen. Um, Alexis Steinberg, Service Organization. Uh, although I am an attorney, <laughs> um, I, I excel at what I do because I am a creative thinker. Um, and part of being a creative thinker is allowing in other individuals who may not have the same viewpoint of you to be heard and to be able to be a part of the conversation. And I think that's one of the most important things to coming to any sort of um, solution or finding any sort of common ground for any issue that you face. Um, I think it's important to, to, to get the totality of every argument and to finally find some common ground, which, you know, turning over to our, our, our president here, uh, just to state something like a final solution to someone who's a Jew and has visited, referring to me, someone who's been to Dachau and Auschwitz, shows the simplicity of some people's minds here. And that's something that we don't need. We need more of a totality of thought. And uh, I hope we can bring that in with the next election. Richard Niederberg with the service organization. Spent 25 years as a judge in Van Nuys. So I spent my whole life listening to both sides of the story. When it comes to neighborhood council agendas, I do as much research as possible to see what it's actually about. I read the places that do the parcel numbers, what's done, I all the other things I've done to research that so I come up with a good opinion. I think everybody should do the same thing. Research before you talk. <coughs> Two things. Every neighborhood council board member has to sign a code of conduct which specifically states that you are not to come to the meeting with an opinion on anything that's on the agenda. You're supposed to research it, listen to everyone. Sometimes you have to cut them off. In a, you can't just go on and on and on as everybody has already complained about how their meetings go too long. That's why there's rules about everyone being timed equally and you have to come and open on So I think there's a difference between listening and hearing. Um, I believe that to hear somebody is to try the best you can to kind of strip yourself of your ego. And this is my first night part, part of this, and I have to say that I'm absolutely outraged about some of the comments that are made between the members of this uh, body. Um, I'm shocked. So I have to say I am totally new at this, and I apologize, I guess, for just being part of it um, tonight. Thank you. 
through painful experience, I've learned to be uh, open to other people's ideas. I'm known for having the highest IQ in America, but my Twitter handle is dumbass genius because for every good idea I have, I have two or three terrible ideas. Just celebrated my 28th wedding anniversary and the ongoing dialogue in my marriage is, what about this idea? And my wife says, says nope, that's dumb. So, yes. <laughs> so, uh, Adam, so uh, the, the question is, uh, are you open to listening to other people's ideas? And uh, also, how do you deal with differing opinions than yours? A uh, quick answer is yes. I mean, the, the better the dialogue, the more information is disseminated. Part of that is we just have to start recruiting people who are experts in the community, in their field, to be present at these meetings. The more information we have uh, that is directed at all of us, the better. And there's a lot of individuals, a lot of community organizations, a lot of businesses that can really contribute. So we have an active role in recruitment. I think it's going to be a lot easier to listen. Eric Previn, homeowner um, candidate. I, I, I like to give comments at Board of Supervisor meetings, and I really like it when they listen. And you know, it's very important when you only have a minute or two to be heard. If you said you did some research you feel it's important that you want to share that. And now that I sit on the side of the day, sometimes I really want to hear from virtually everybody, uh, even if I don't like what they're saying, because I feel like that's our job. And so I'm totally open to listening, maybe even too far on the spectrum because I'm a First Amendment advocate as well. So I like to hear everything, but I do think we should have decorum. Thank you. Uh, Tony Thompson, I absolutely am open to hear what everybody has to say. Um, I don't always agree, but I find that um, <coughs> understanding where they're coming from helps me um, maybe see you know, what they're trying to say. So, um, And as far as being courteous, uh, I think that's super important because if you can't respect what someone's saying, they're, they're not going to say anything. Richard Adams, business. Um, I think we can all agree that not every single idea you're confronted with every day is a brilliant one. Uh, sometimes I hear or see things on the internet that make my eyes roll over and click as hard as my knee just did. But I've been in a lot of meetings, and even where I've heard ideas or suggestions, comments that they didn't agree with, they often trigger new thoughts in my mind of maybe how to address the issue or integrate some of the information they had into a new, better way of doing things. And as for diplomacy and tact, there's some people will tell you, I have a lifetime supply of it that I've saved for special occasions. <laughs> the at the board meeting will be one day. Thank you. Thank you. We have back to Joseph. All right. Uh, we're going to be coming into the home stretch here, folks. Uh, you know, it's, it's quarter of eight right here. How's everyone doing? All right. Everyone's still awake. Everyone's still lively. So we are coming into the yeah. home stretch. I'm going to ask another one. Uh, Michael D. Lazar uh, is not here. And. Uh, if you have more people come in, you might make one more call for questions. Uh, well, that's a good idea. If anyone else has any questions, please uh, send them on in. I do have some uh, uh, question forms right here. If you'd like Richard Welsh, uh, not in here. Let's see. Alex is Vicky. All right, so we'll start with you. Obviously, we will go clockwise right here. Um, Studio City is a gateway to uh, entertainment. It's a tourist place, and so is everyone, obviously. Um, we have a lot here. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, we have a lot here. Uh, again, it's a gateway to entertainment. We have businesses as well. We have actors, we have producers, we have everything. We also are in the Valley. We pay into um, Los Angeles City as a whole. We pay perhaps even more. My question to you is, where do you feel that Studio City fits into the bigger picture of Los Angeles? What makes us special? Uh, and how will you capitalize on that being a board member? Well, I think Studio City is actually an amazing place to live. Uh, we're right on the cusp of it. We have a lot of green, we have a lot of mountains, and we have a great topography. And we also happen to have one of the major industries in our city. And it's, it's very important to try to uh, nurture that and make sure that the, 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 that we listen to those industries which still give us uh, the resources to keep our city a beautiful, a beautiful place. So uh, I would just focus on that and, uh, like I said, happy businesses stay. Jeanette Burke was a service organization rep um, for 65 years. Um, important stuff is that it was started in 1922, around that time. Um, when he built the studio, 
Thanks, Senate. And it's worked ever since then, basically, but it's grown a lot. A lot of the roads were laid out by the colleagues of Max Senate. I think that basically, yes, we need to have some bars and districts and stuff like that, but most kind of thing, I think it's easy to work very well as it is, you know, and just try to improve that. You. you know, nice. Thank you. Lisa. I've lived here almost my whole life, and I've watched everything get more crowded and more crowded and more crowded. The problem for Studio City is that we are stuck in between the hillside, the river, Ventura Boulevard, and the freeways. So for us to grow leaps and bounds, which we just couldn't do it, how could we possibly have more places for cars? Unless, of course, everybody wants to ride a bike or take other ways of going places, which if we could get that going, that would be the best. Um, it is for us to support the industry, um, but also to understand that it's a reciprocal dynamic and that they need to support the neighborhood. And um, uh, in particular, there is sort of the, the I, I, I guess one of the first I complain is the excessive filming that's happening in some of the parts of the neighborhood that uh, it's more benefit on their end than on the part of the residential area that they are going to be interesting. Thank you. I'm in entertainment, and people in entertainment are spoiled babies. <laughs> and as LA becomes less pleasant to live in, people will move elsewhere. We have to do what we can to keep Studio City a nice, full-service, entertainment-friendly uh, community. And we also have to grab some tech, as I keep bringing up, to maintain a healthy local economy. So I work in West Hollywood, and everybody loves Studio City right now. It's where every young person is talking about buying their first house or their second house. So we have to be ready to accommodate that type of demographic, which means not shying away necessarily from nightlife, even because it's inevitable that it's coming. We just have to be prepared to deal with it. A lot of young families who need crosswalks, who need parks, who need improved parks, uh, so I'm excited to see what happens in the next few years because it's definitely changing. Eric Previtt, homeowners, I agree with a lot of what has been said. City of City, if you look at a map of the city of Los Angeles, it's right in the middle. It's really creepy, weird, but cool. And frankly, City of City is a small town, and that's what we all love about it. That's why people are trying to come over. <coughs> and I don't blame them. It's where I raise my kids. But I think it's also a petri dish because of some of the big personalities, like Michael Klausman at CBS, like Lisa Starkin, who for years battled against developers and things, and Patrice Berlin and the people who, you know, said no to other things. And I think that this is a great place that where Tony Thompson, Studio City is amazing. I mean, you, there's such a different vibe here from even over the hill in Hollywood. And I think our restaurants and our cafes are amazing. So, you know, um, just really honing in to the business owners that run these uh, restaurants and cafes will um, make a big difference, I think, to keep it the way it is. I think we could be honest that the uh, Valley is basically the city of Los Angeles as a wallet. That's one reason why we tried to secede and why the neighborhood councils were formed. Uh, one third of the physical gateways into the valley are in Studio City, Coldwater and Laurel Canyon. We need to do things like fighting things like SB 50, which would incredibly increase the density in this neighborhood and throughout the state, as a matter of fact. And uh, to make improve our quality of life, we need to work with the city council office and the county and everybody else cooperatively and diplomatically to fight things like crime, homelessness, and all the other things that drag down our quality of life. Thank you, Just yeah, I agree that the key is in networking. It's really get to the get to the right people at the right time and make decisions to go out. It's gonna work for everybody. But everything's gonna change. And we just gonna go with it or without it. So, I mean it's gonna change without us. If, if we if we if we can do anything, we come with a vision, what would we love? We talk about that and we come with a constructive idea how it can happen. Uh, Studio City is great, it's, uh, and I agree with Adam that it's getting a lot younger, and I think that this board needs to uh, better represent that. It is becoming a nightlife destination, whether people like it or not, it just is. Uh, it's the only place where you can go hike Fryman and roll right on down and have a pitcher of margaritas at Mexicali. Um, I, as far as the film industry, I'm also in the film industry. I hope that we 
stay here. The reason, the way that we're going to stay here, though, is fighting back against NIMBYism, where everybody wants the film industry to stay here just as long as they're not filming next door to you. Um, we need to fight back against that. Yeah, Brian Carroll, Renter. So I work in the entertainment industry, too, and I know that when I come home from work, the last thing I want to do is think about the movie industry. And so that's why I look to Studio City as being so much more than just the entertainment business. We have our parks, we have great cafes, we have great bars and nightlife, we have our library system, we have our great schools. It has so much to offer. How does it fit within Los Angeles? Well, California was started here at Campo de Coanga. I mean, we should be proud of that and we should carry it on. Sorry, can you repeat the question? <laughs> sure. Where was I? Um, uh, uh, Studio City uh, is uh, a gateway for tourism, um, for the young, for, for um, actors, writers, everything. Where do you feel that Studio City fits into the bigger picture of Los Angeles? How would you capitalize on that? Um, one of the great things about Studio City is that without traffic, we're about half an hour from pretty much everything. The beach, mountains, the desert, <coughs> downtown. And even here within our community, we have places to work, play, eat, just live. It's, we have Ventura Boulevard, which is pretty walkable in some spots, and it's just a great place. Um, Denise um, Palmore. Um, Studio City is a restaurant destination. We are the gateway to um, Studio City. We can go downtown in Hollywood. We can go over the hill to Beverly Hills. Um, we can go out into the valley. We're kind of a center of where things come and go. People come from over the other side of the hill to eat here. Um, we should capitalize on that and we should keep it going. Uh, Alexis Steinberg, Service Organization. I think Studio City is such a happy medium between the city and the valley. It has all of the great things that we love about the city without the obnoxious things of the city, but it has that hometown feel of being in a community, which I can't say for Hollywood or Encino or Sherman Oaks. I think that, you know, I walk down the street of Studio City and I see people I know all the time, and I think that that's really the value that the community and the family brings in Studio City, and that's where we find the bigger picture. Oh, oh, look at that. All right, well, again, Listen, uh, we are going to give you guys two minutes um, to say your farewells and your final things. But the one last question is: um, big question is climate change now uh, in today's uh, little political atmosphere here. How do you feel that um, climate change falls in your priorities, and how do you see the SCNC's role in addressing it? Uh, with that, I should have picked the name first. But... Let's see. Uh, Denise. Okay. Um, Denise. Uh, climate change. Climate change affects us in many ways. We have one of the last open green spaces uh, in the valley, uh, which is the golf course. Um, it may stay a golf course, it may not stay a golf course, we don't know. Um, but the more we keep chopping down trees to build big buildings, if we do not stop chopping everything down, we won't have any green um, to filter our, our, uh, our air. Um, it's going to affect us. Uh, Alexis Steinberg Service Organization. Gosh, climate change is like an international issue. Um, but I think that Studio City has been, done such a great job of attempting to, um, you know, help our environment by cutting down on the use of cars, especially the city of Los Angeles, who's working to use the, the metro as um, a means of transportation, who are making our, our streets um, safer for bike lanes. I think that those are all important things and small changes that can really affect the Thank world. You. Hi, Alex. It's Vicki. Um, I believe it is a macro issue, but we can do our part here with uh, climate change by preserving our trees, our green life, our, our, our wildlife, uh, not impacting them with bright lights that can devastate a hillside and, and change uh, a lot of the timing and sleeping patterns of animals. Uh, I do believe we can do more, and I do believe we need a, a neighborhood council that listens to its constituents to, to follow that path. Which is an service organization. I, I agree with everything you heard from, but I think we're already working on it. 
you have a heck of a lot of, of um, LED and CFL bulbs being used. Our biggest industry here is, is CPF, and of course it has some of the largest fuel cell installations of anywhere. So what happens is they're turning on generators every so often basically in case emergency because it's fuel cells. That's what it needs. Cool, thank you. Oh, I think the sustainability committee should be reinstituted and I don't really know a lot about what we could possibly do here other than each one of us individually trying to get as green as we can get planting the most plants. <coughs> Collaborating with stakeholders and um, basically put out the information that's, you know, it, it's, in, that it's informing each one of us. Um, so I don't believe that one body can do much alone, although obviously, um, I, I'm, I'm sorry, to be honest, I really, um, I'm not familiar with what the <coughs> group actually has done in terms of this, so I do not mean at all to criticize for lack of knowledge. The general public isn't yet ready to admit the importance of climate change. Regional, recent national survey has climate change as only being the 11th most dire issue for people. <laughs> it, it, things are going to get annoying. Uh, the, the era of individual cars will, for most people, will go away in the next 30 years. By being forward thinking, we can try to Studio City can be at the forefront of figuring out the least annoying solutions, like what to do about those frickin' scooters. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we definitely live in a microcosm, and sometimes it feels like it's hard to be involved and hard to get involved on very macro level issues, but we want our kids to be in parks, and we want our kids to be on hiking trails, and if they are, they're going to appreciate the environment, and that transcends into the next generation. So really our, our job is to encourage uh, the development of parks and, and the maintenance and development of our hiking trails up on the hill, so, which I use often. Eric Krevin, homeowner. Um, I think that Studio City is iconic because of its trees. And I know some of us have been looking at the way we treat them and take care of them and sustainability as a, there was something that was passed. I think it's incredibly important and so you know, it, in, in the climate issue, trees are so important. And in my neighborhood, I had an experience where I saw someone go up a tree, uh, and I thought they were like giving it a haircut, but then they went to the tippy top, and it was a beautiful tree, and then they, they cut the whole tree down, and it just died, you know, it was just horrifying, and it was not clear what happened. So now the city has a little bit of Tony Thompson, that's such a big question, but I guess the two things I would say is plant more trees, and have more charging stations for green cars. I'm old enough to remember being told when I was in high school that by now we'd be in an ice age. So <laughs> the climate does change, it has in the past, will in the future. I'm also old enough to remember that we were the first people in our neighborhood to take our front yard and backyard and make it all native or at least drought friendly plants. Long before they took gave us people tax money to do that. So we walk the walk. We do recycling in our house. And uh, my backyard has grass, doesn't need a lawnmower because we picked the right one. So there's a lot of things to be done, but in the, this, I'm a plank holder of the stakeholder of the sustainability committee. So I walk the walk. Joseph. So I personally plant four trees up to now, and I see that as, a, as an opportunity to really engage schools in the, in the system with. with open communication when we when we like hold a space for young people to come and come up with what they can do the solution is where is the right question asked the, the answer will come uh, climate change is real it's man-made it's turned me into a single issue voter on a federal level um and but this is a prime example of it's it's one of those things that we all agree like we want less cars on the street well then scooters are an alternative but we don't like the scooters we got to kind of give a little bit there. Um, I also, the sustainability committee has been going. Brian Carroll's been chairing it. He's been doing a great job. He does have a Trump supporter on his committee, which I find a little odd. But other than that, Brian's been doing a great job on it. And uh, obviously, this is an issue that goes far beyond the SCNC. 
So as stated before, this is a macro problem, but the people who are on the forefront of it are Los Angeles and California. And as I am the chair of the Sustainability Committee with people who are also much smarter than me, and to answer a previous question of a lot of different kinds of points of view to bring a gravity of weight to that committee, we can have a, a frontline defense to be able to influence the policy that comes out of Los Angeles itself. And it goes beyond just planting a bunch of trees, I will say. Climate change is an extremely important issue in this age, and I agree with Brian that it does go far beyond planting a lot of trees. I think that we need to make as much noise about it as we can as a community, and we need to try to affect City Hall, and as a result of that, we need further up. We're already doing a lot just as a state, but we need to just get louder. Okay, thank you. And we're back to the top of the key. Oh, with that, everyone, i like to thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Some of the questions I didn't get to, some of the questions were soaked up into some other questions that were asked. Some are very pointed for the board itself, which we'll get some answers to as well. Um, with that, though, uh, half an hour remaining, uh, 15 people here, two minutes apiece. Let me grab a name, and you guys can make your closing arguments. Use your two minutes, don't use your two minutes. It's up to you. And uh, again, we will start with Nancy Kramer. Got prizes to give out. <laughs> David, David, huh? Okay. All right. Uh, Jonathan Keldfeld. Plus, we'll get somebody soon. Lisa Karajian. Okay. <laughs> Jenny Mill. That's pretty much what I could, right? <laughs> Rick Rosner. There he is. Oh, Rick. Oh, Rick. Yeah. Oh, Rick. I'm so sorry, Rick. I just wanted to prove. So, my friend, uh, stand up, sit down, do what you will. Uh, but again, everyone closing uh, right now. Two minutes. This is for you, my friends. Everyone settle. Rick. All right. So, Studio City is currently the nicest community in the whole San Fernando Valley. You go down to Ventura, Encino, Tarzana, they have they're a little bit messed up. And we have immediate issues, issues of a you know, one to three year time frame, bringing in more restaurants, um, staying hip, staying, you know, being popular with young people and all the bars along the Um And then we have issues for the medium future, five to seven to 10 years from now. And Things are changing fast, and we have to be forward thinking, which means looking, as I keep saying, at, at, at tech problems caused by tech, at solutions brought by tech, um, to maintain our position as the place people want to uh, want to live. We not only is Studio City is not just getting younger; it's also getting older because when it costs two million dollars to buy a house. That is somebody who's you know, in, in his 50s or 60s to be able to afford the house. And as people live longer, by 2030, I'm guessing that 25% of the property in Studio City will be owned by people 80 or older. And trying to maintain a vibrant community with all the changes we'll be facing. Uh, is going to be tough, and we have to start thinking about the future. Thanks. Thank you. And everyone, I'll throw up a finger for the one minute mark. I didn't do that with you, Rick, but thank you, just so you guys know. <laughs> so, uh, Adam. again, uh, Adam Summer. I spoke quite a bit tonight, so I'll keep it kind of short. I'm really excited to be involved, really excited to advocate for the community. I loved how tonight went, actually. Everybody stayed, and everybody seemed like they really enjoyed it. I hope the neighborhood council meetings will be like that. And in a lot of ways, they already are. You have a lot of people who are excited about our community, including myself, who have young kids, who have family in the area, who haven't had a chance to be this involved on such a ground level. So I'm excited. Um, if you get a chance to vote for me, I appreciate that. I'll do my best to engage my pocket and expand that pocket. So thank you. Eric Revan, uh, homeowner and longtime resident of Studio City. Um, 
And to, what to say in summation is not clear to me. I mean, I really have committed um, a lot of time and energy to trying and in lots of different ways to feel more engaged myself with my community. And I know we're trying in the Studio City Neighborhood Council to bring more warm and inviting meetings, and I want to be a part of that. And, you know, I think that Studio City has a kind of um, different meaning for all of us. But as I tried to say before, you know, it's important that all of you be represented uh, up here, but, you know, when this is the board. And, you know, I think that uh, it would be feel, would feel really good to feel like, hey, come to the meeting tonight, you know, friends, because we're going to be discussing a very important issue that all of us are going to be impacted by. And then the people would come and get a piece of pizza and then give their comments and we would be interested. You know, that's the kind of dream of how it should go. And I mean, it takes work, you know, no matter how talented and many of these people are extremely talented, it does take a little bit of work. I don't want to scare people off because you can put the amount of work you want into it. But, you know, for all of us to make Studio City as incredible as it is, because it is really, I mean, it's a small town, but it's cosmopolitan, and we've got Fryman, and we've got, I mean, just imagine standing up on Mulholland and looking down, and you can go all the way to Lancashire on the right, and all the way to what, okay. Coldwater on the left, and okay. all the way up to Moore Park, a little farther. Fulton. Fulton, yeah. So this is just a wonderful piece of our community, and, you know, we should be protective of it, but also invite it. You know, the gateway is a great metaphor, and I know that there have been talks about where to stick the signs and the this and the that, but at the end of the day, it's a great place to raise your kids. I, I spend time on this pitch with my children, that's the 10-second mark, you know, uh, and we, we, we fought hard, we had great battles, but we were always civil, and I look forward to bringing fairness to students. I'm Tony Thompson, and I'm running for the at-large stakeholder position. I just want to thank everybody. I know everybody worked all day, and to stay for these several hours means a lot. It was definitely eye-opening uh, this evening, and it was great to hear everybody share, the people who have been veterans on this board. I'm super excited to get involved, and I'm not deceived at all that this is going to be work. And I'm committed to it. My heart's in the right place. And I'm looking forward to learning as well. So when it comes time to vote on May 16th at Walter Reed, I would appreciate your vote. Richard Adams, business. Um, Pat and Seth, that great diplomat of ours, um, if everyone, this is a paraphrase, if everyone is thinking alike, no one's thinking. He was talking about staff meetings, but it's the same thing. If you have a monochrome of ideas, you don't have any ideas. You've got a doctrine. Doctrines are bad in general. Okay? I'd also like to point out Studio City has always been a residential community with a dining component and a business component. People come here, they go to dinner, they shop, you go home. If you want to go out and party until 2 or 3 a.m., there's lots of places very nearby where you can do that to your heart's content. And to be to a full-fledged business like The Grove would destroy the quality of life everybody says they want. I'd also like to point out that the board meetings run long, not because stakeholders want to have their voice heard, which is the whole purpose of having a board meeting to begin with, but because the board members themselves are either uninformed or talk past each other or ramble on long past that and engage in back and forth, and that's what makes your meetings run long. People don't come to meetings because the board is not addressing issues that are interested in land use, primary safety, actionable ideas that you can do, not pie in the sky stuff. And um, I'd also like to see um, neighbor councils there to listen. And here's an idea I've been kicking around for a few years. Literally, you have Coenga Pass, Laurel Canyon, Coldwater, um, Benedict Canyon, the four or five hour freeway, and uh, Pega Canyon. Those are the basic gateways into the valley. We have two of them. I'd like to see a sign up there that says the Studio City Neighbor Council welcomes you to the valley, like totally. <laughs> Just to riff on the valley. Same reason that the picnic is called the Totally Awesome Summer Picnic. We, we're the studio area, we might as well engage in that. So, like I said, I'm running from the business seat. I'm open to everybody else's ideas. I think we've heard that some people aren't open to other people's ideas, and you can try to own judgments from that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm on Joseph again. Uh, I would say it this way, like, look at the, we live in a universe which is going from inside out. If you really want to see the change in our world, Gandhi said that, become the change you want to be. So just being together and really come up with, with the 
communication in this space about certain topic and be present is, I'm very grateful for that and I really appreciate the presence of everybody here. Thank you for that. So, since I've been on the board, I've seen a couple of proposals come forward, which I've always thought <coughs> proposals to outlaw ways, proposals to limit the use of lift, proposals to get rid of lime scooters. Um, these are, this is the future. And we need, as a community, to just embrace that the times are changing, and this is the new world that we live in. Um, and I hope that the next board kind of better represents the real demographic of Studio City. Um, it doesn't just have to do with age, but um, I would like to see it get a little bit younger. Um, the, saying that, I turn 40 next week. Um, um, but, and, and as far as nightlife and whatnot, it is becoming a nightlife destination. That's another thing that we need to embrace because it's gonna happen whether we want to or not. Um, and I hope in the coming years that we can have meetings where, um, I mean, the only time you really get people to come out is if you have some crazed anti-homeless idea. Um, I hope that the Homeless Committee can stay intact and um, change hearts and minds on that. And um, that's it for me. I'm gonna stand up just to give more gravity to this. So, uh, Brian Carroll for Residential Renter Seats. Um, I just wanna say, not only do I love Studio City, but I'm a civics nerd. And by what I mean by that is, you know, on the country level, there's no, all the ideas on the country level come from the states. On the state level, all the ideas come from the cities. And on the city level, all the ideas come from the neighborhoods and communities. We have a fundamental responsibility and obligation to do big ideas and to have that be an experiment for bigger things. Once I came here and we started doing the open forum series at the library, I was able to see just how many interesting and different approaches that the citizens of Studio City have. That we don't know why they've never brought it up to a meeting, maybe they don't know about it, but they're out there and they're here in Studio City. If we mine that kind of ideas and get them in the room and we can develop it in committee, we can really put forth a proposal that can be an experiment for the rest of the city, for the state, and the national. We can start change here in Studio City, as is Vicki said, from the bottom up. And we just need more people and different participation to be able to facilitate that. So thank you very much. May 16th, residential renter seat, Brian Carroll. Thank you very much. <laughs> we talk a lot about young people. I am young people. <laughs> Even by the time if I get reelected or elected to a new seat on the same board, um, I will not yet be 21. But I am young people. I do represent the youngest people who still can vote. Um, I am doing this not from some ulterior motive. This is not because I want to put this on my resume for college. This is because I love Studio City. It's because I care. Um, and I hope that you remember that on May 16th, Residential Renter, Dr. Ray. Hi, Denise, um, homeowner. Um, you know, some of us have lived in Studio City for a very long time. Um, I wasn't born here, but um, that was Westwood. Uh, it's, Studio City is a, is a family oriented area. Um, we have young families, older families, in between families. That is the key to Studio City. Um, we need to bring everybody together and, and discuss what we want to see for the future. Um, I can't tell you what, what you want for the future. I don't know what you want for the future. But if we sit down and talk, and we get some new ideas and some things flowing, we can do a lot to maintain what we have and make it better. Uh, Alexis Steinberg, Service Organization C. Um, I heard a lot of really great questions tonight, and I heard a lot of really great answers. Um, and it makes me really excited to be a part of Studio City's board. Um, you know, I've, I've been part of this community for 30 years when it was time for me to buy my first condo. Um, I bought it five blocks away from my parents, still in Studio <laughs> City. Um, and I don't really plan on leaving because I love it here and I think that the community is, is phenomenal. And um, judging by the questions that were posed tonight, uh, I think that, that everybody really truly has 
um, a sense of community and concern for what Studio City stands for. And we're vibrant and we're young and um, you know we're changing. And real demographics was uh, touched on and I think that a younger perspective is always um, a great balance for what's you know, been in existence here and, and what can change with the times to keep the charm, to keep the beauty, but um, to keep up with, you know, what's going on in the greater city. Um, I'm a great negotiator, I'm a great listener, and I just, I'm really excited to see, you know, what can come from this. And so I hope that when it's time for you to vote, Alexis Steinberg for a service organization seat, I really appreciate your support. Uh, I'm Alex's Vicky, and I'm on the employee seat for Studio City. Um, actually, I, I was born and raised in North Hollywood, and uh, and slowly but surely, I I came south, and uh, and I settled in Studio City ten years ago. And over the last five years, we've had quite a quite a tumultuous time. We've had a challenge in my specific neighborhood of a, of, of of our school, Harvard Westlake. Uh, uh, posing an incredible threat to our neighboring uh, hillside community. Uh, luckily, uh, through the help of, of Save Coldwater Canyon, uh, which I'm a, a board member of, uh, we were able to slow it down, if not stop it, which I believe we did, and we had a hand in that. Uh, these are all challenges in, in, in addition to our homeless problem. Uh, uh, there has to be solutions. We have increase in property crime, uh, we have traffic issues that still uh, are plaguing our, our, our town. So what I would, what I would say is, is, yes, I'm excited to hear all of these solutions that people are posing. It's exciting. I've never heard such a vibrant, even though we're, we've got about 50% participation today, the answers and questions that have been posed are just exciting, and, and I can't wait to be part of it. Again, I just want to impress upon everyone, we need to have our city respond to us. We do have people that are concerned, but when they repeatedly don't get what they want, they, they really do stop coming. And, and I'm hoping to be that liaison to reconnect that, that link that I think has been fractured. And, uh, and with these ideas that you've heard, uh, I'm excited. So uh, I hope on May 16th you'll come out and you'll vote for Alex's Vicky uh, for the employees, uh, self-employed seat. And thank you for coming out. Niederberg with for the service organization seat musically and we get a lot of help even if you're not on the board. For example, I really like the idea that Melanie Winter did doing this the, the LA River path was really a good thing with the frog gate. I like what Barry did basically in the beautification. You know, we it, it really improved things. We even have uh, Abra Sussman, you know, who really supported her husband doing the homeless committee stuff. So I think that the whole thing is not just a board, it's a whole community. And uh, I think we're doing well, but we can do better. Well, I want to let you know that the board that I served on for eight years, we stopped many, many, many changes that would, would terribly affect us now. One of which Alex has just mentioned. My board wrote a 350 page document answering and asking numerous questions relating to the Harvard Westlake parking facility. And we think that that is the reason that they couldn't answer those questions and they decided to turn their back on that and purchase what I'm hoping is going to remain the green space that was spoken about by somebody down there. That green space is the only part of the valley that's left that's along the river that could, you know, we really needed to stay as a green space. Harvard Westlake has said they might do that, but who knows? You never know what will happen later. They, they could have try to change the um, the zoning from agricultural to residential. You just don't know. So we need to be on top of all of that. It's not just old people and young people. It's your quality of life. And if you live near a bar that doesn't follow its rules, then something should be done about that. If you live near a, a place where there, where there, it's too many people that live there with too many cars, because let's face it, we don't have a lot of ways to get out of this place, 
then where are those cars going to go? And it isn't just that they have to park on a residential street. It's how people perceive and how much noise they make of where they're going into these neighborhoods or even on Ventura Boulevard. I, I live very close to Ventura Boulevard. The noise that we hear, and these are not bars, these are restaurants, and they are not following their, their CUBs. They're not following their CUPs, and that's why the Neighborhood Council needs to be watching and report it and get it something taken care of. The ones that are bars, they should stay open. Now, I'm going to simplify a bit the neurobiology into left and right brain, but um, I understand that uh, every, every implementing idea needs a practical, and it has a practical aspect of it. But I'm welcoming also an approach from, um, of the, again, the human element. So, you know, we care about issues, but we also have to care about each other. So. <clears throat> I'm running because I want to show up and model that caring, um, whatever that issue is. Um, I want to congratulate you to honor as a representative of the young here, Claire. Um, behind you, I believe there are wonderful parents who actually uh, parented you quite well, so I'm hoping that um, I will um, actually um, you know, invite other parents to talk about raising children like you. Um, and I mean it with all my heart. Um, so, what I'm hoping is if I am uh, elected, that basically I'm getting emotional because, you know, I, there's a lot of wonderful things that obviously uh, this work has done. But um, what I hope is they don't and that all of you don't forget the human element. Um, God, I have no idea why I'm so emotional. But um, there are a lot of young families that are raising their kids inside the home and then drive them to schools. And we put a lot of effort into schools that put everything, and, and then we have parents that create schools and schools that create parents. Um, and there is another element of the society or the community that can actually shoulder the parenting because we are raising new members of this community. We're not going to solve all this uh, just in our generation or in a few years. I mean, obviously, people who have been on the board have been here for many years. And so, some, again, thank you very much. Sorry. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're all good. And with that, everyone, May 16th, 4 p.m. to 8 p.m., 4525 Irvine Ave, Walter Reed Middle School. Thank you for everyone for taking part in this. Thank you very much.